In this lesson we're going to be drawing a segment of an orange. I'm going to be uh, using a lot of the techniques that we've used so far. So I'm going to be using the embossing tool to pick out some of these highlights. Um, I'm going to also be using the, the odorless solvent. Um, but this time I'm using it on Bristol board. So you, you hopefully will see how it works um, slightly differently on a less absorbent paper. I'm going to be using the scotch tape as well to pull out some areas of white. Um, I'm using the same colour, uh, pencil colours, Prismacolor, as I've used before. So hopefully we'll put all those different techniques together to get this lovely, all these different textures, nice rind texture there and then this glossy wet texture of the centre of the orange. So first of all I'm just going to use the embossing tool just to put a few little areas where I'm going to preserve absolute white on here. They don't have to be exactly like the ones on there, just randomly dot a few areas in. I'm just going to work on this bottom half of the orange just for time's sake to show you. So first of all I'm just going to put in some lemon yellow around this area. and all on this as an undercut for this peel as well. well. Just like before, I'm going to use the side of my pencil to keep those white areas. And take the yellow in well into this area of pith there. And I can see those white bits now so I can bound them properly. That's really what the embossing does, it just it gives you just the initial, it almost outlines them in one, one sweep of your pencil so that then you can see them and avoid them. I'm just going to colour in here. I'm going to leave a few of the highlights, the big highlights I can see. I'm just going to take out some of this graphite that I've still left in there. So yeah, I'm just going to um, I'm going to try and save some of these just by eye. So just to show you another method, just outlining those straight away just by what I can see. And then if I'm missing any, and I think there's areas where it needs more highlights, I'm going to use the scotch tape method to pull them back out. So in the rest of the bits that I'm not saving, I'm just going to colour over in this yellow. That's another way you can think of it. Those bits when I was just colouring them, I was looking at the shapes there, these sort of triangle shapes of the dark bit of orange and colouring those in there and then saving the bits in between as the, the highlights. So it's like looking at shapes and negative shapes within it just to make the pattern up. But again, you don't have to be too accurate. It doesn't have to be an exact replica of what's there, just an impression of the texture. I'm just going to use a tiny bit of this on here, give this a bit of, take some of the bright whiteness away from it. Okay, I'm going to switch to um, Spanish orange. And just where this peel meets the pith bit there, I'm just going to make a kind of, that kind of loopy texture again that we did before on the lemon. Now you can see because I'm using a bit darker colour there you can see those embossed areas starting to show up. I'll just do a little bit like it so you can see. I'm using the edge. It's best used when it's tiny little specks that you're preserving. You can pretty much colour over those and it'll keep them even when you're colouring like that. orange. Just using that scribbly motion. 
get some good texture in the peel. And I'm going to just pick out a few of these dark spots in the pith. I'm going to use a little bit of um, golden rod again on here just to get the colour a bit more muted on some of these areas. And then I've got terracotta. Try and bring some of this dark area into the, the right tone and then we can adjust everything else according to it. <laughs> Just use the scotch tape on some of this part where I've lost some of my whites and put a, a mineral spirit wash on this peel. So there's a couple of places on here. the zest it spirit just the same way just with a cotton bud you do have to be slightly more careful when you're working on bristol board or any similar paper that's not really absorbent it's very smooth because it will run down if you're not careful so that's why i'm just squeezing out the excess really notice the effect as much because obviously if you're working on a paper with tooth you can see the texture when you're doing the sketching in and then when you do this it's really noticeable the change this just sort of um, just finishes blending if you like the, the because there's no tooth on your paper your layers are going to be smoother anyway this just does just bring it all together and allows you to do that whole painterly thing we were doing before where you can pick up the colour on the cotton bud and then use it in other places if you want to just touch places up. The other thing about it being not, absor not as absorbent is it takes a lot longer to dry. So I'll just let that dry for a few minutes. So my uh, OMS wash is dry now. I'm just going to go in with some crimson red and make this dark bit as dark as it needs to be in the proper colour. And just like with the watercolour paper, you can actually feel a difference when you've had the, the spirit wash on and it's dried. It just makes the texture of the paper feel a little bit different, a little bit sort of slippy. Almost as if it, it feels as though the, the colour ought not to adhere to it anymore, but it does. Just getting a really fine point there for this outline. Actually, I'm just noticing that the the um, the dots of colour that I had on my cotton bud before that I just wiped off on this area have made a really nice texture. That seems like sometimes you can just working with things like spirits, you can get accidental things that happen that you might like. That's why it's important to 
experiment with with stuff new new techniques I'm just gonna use this kind of little hatching stroke here just to represent some of the sort of fibrous bits in these juicy bits of orange it's going to go into dark brown purple. I don't know if you can see but those little embossed dots that I did there even though I've just scribbled over them in purple are still showing through. I mean, if it's, uh, it's best best worked for tiny areas, it really does preserve the white. It's a bit of indigo blue. Just in that darkest dark bit. dark brown in some of these areas. And purple. It's going to go back in with canary yellow again. Terracotta. a little bit of yellow ochre tiny bit more purple and then I think I'm happy with that So it's using all the techniques we've learnt up until now, all in one piece to bring everything together and create the look of an orange. <laughs>